What's good, combat sports fans? Forgive me for posting this like five days after the card. Usually, I'm only like a couple days after the card. I like to give my review, take a couple days to get my thoughts organized and see what everybody else is thinking online about how the fights went. But this time around, I've just been looking for jobs lately around where I live, so I haven't really had the time to put this one out there. I've been working on the editing and shit for it, but I didn't really get to record and like sit down and give my thoughts. So allow me to do that. Justin Gaethje versus Dustin Poirier took place on that card, obviously. First round was pretty competitive, back and forth. You could tell both fighters were a lot better than what they were when they came out and fought the first time. Or if not better, at least a lot more composed and had game plans that didn't involve just coming into a car wreck like they did in their first fight. Now, I would argue that Dustin slightly won the first round, just kind of slightly outstruck him, landed the better shots, but it didn't even matter because come the second round, Gaethje lands this beautiful high kick over the guard, uh, claps Dustin instantly, puts him out cold, he lands a follow-up shot, flips off the cage, does a backflip, it was pretty badass, and then of course gets handed his BMF belt, which you could tell he probably doesn't even really give a fuck about, like, knowing Justin Gaethje, if it's not the undisputed gold, he probably just doesn't care. But yeah, I mean, I, it was difficult watching a legend like Poirier get head kicked like that, I'm not going to lie, even though I did predict him to get knocked out in the second round like a fucking G, but it was still difficult to watch somebody with an iron chin who comes out there and usually whoops everybody's ass get put out cold, it was a little bit wild, some in the air in uh, Salt Lake City when it comes to the head kicks. Then we had Poetan moving up into light heavyweight, and he successfully won his debut. He won the second and the third round against a former light heavyweight champion, which I feel like not enough people are talking about. Jan was the light heavyweight champion, and in a lot of people's eyes, damn near still was because of how much that belt has played hot potato in the last couple of years. Nobody's really been able to hold on to it since John Jones left, and you could argue that Jan has been the best light heavyweight champion or the best light heavyweight since John Jones moved up. Now... I don't know what his game plan was coming into Salt Lake City with only two weeks to prepare. He should have taken like a month to get accoladed, and then I think that Jan probably could have done what he did in the first round, every single round to Alex Pereira. But Alex Pereira, he just came ready, man, and in the second and third, he was really picking apart Jan. Uh, I believe in the third round, he got taken down again at like the last minute, but like by that point, it was just optics. Jan was being a sneaky little veteran trying to win the, the whole fight based on that takedown and the ground and pound at the end thinking he would sway the judges and i mean it almost worked because it ended up going to a split decision but in a real real sports fans eyes or a real mar mixed martial artist eyes every or i'm sorry in a real mma fans eyes that knows how to judge the sport based on the criteria we all know that alex Pereira won that fight there shouldn't have been no controversy whatsoever i don't know why yawn was upset about it i don't think he could truly believe that he won that fight seeing what happened in the second and third and then we had Derek lewis coming out like he was jorge mazadol trying to break the knockout record after being counted out uh, i think he was like a, a heavy underdog in this fight too i picked against him it was one of the only fights on the card i got wrong and i was super happy about it Derek came out, got his hot balls part two. <laughs> awesome post mic moment. It was just great. And then we had Bobby. Oh, I don't even want to talk about this. Fuck. Bobby Green submitting Tony Ferguson with an arm triangle choke. Basically big brothered Tony Ferguson. Tony was looking good in the first round, looking youthful. But I mean, honestly, you could just tell that he didn't have it anymore. Like as the fight went on, Bobby was picking him apart like most of us expected him to do. Ends up getting him to the ground, or I believe Tony was trying to chase it to the ground in the third round. And then we end up in this position. And yeah, I, I, I just can't believe that this happened, man. I think it was Bobby Green's only submission in his t entire career. Tony is the man that used to be known for never getting subbed. And now he's losing to people that wouldn't hold his jock strap five years ago. It's so disappointing. I mean, good shit for Bobby Green, but it's just disappointing as a Tony fan. And we had Kevin Holland absolutely demolishing the grappler with a choke. Like, so much stuff from this card was just kind of baffling. I picked Kevin Holland. I kind of expected him to go out there and dust Michael Chiesa. I didn't think it would be this easy, though. Chiesa is just not a fighter at heart. Like, yeah, he's he's a he's a warrior. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. He goes in there, he trains hard, yada, yada, yada. But he's not a fighter. When that knee came up the center and barely grazed him, he shot for that double so quickly and got put in the choke. It was crazy. Then we have Gabriel Bonfim, when we're speaking of chokes. Goes to this amazing guillotine. He's the king of guillotines at 170. Brazilian freak of nature. Fighting somebody who was honestly a really tested opponent in Trevin Giles. With a solid record of like 16 and 4. And he goes out there and he just makes it look like he was nothing. He did just did not belong in there with him. I want to see Gabriel Bonfim put up against a grappler so bad, dude. Fuck the strikers. And then Roman Kopilov 
gets a nice head kick knockout on Claudio Hibero on the prelims. It was a pretty back and forth first round. Or maybe this happened in the first round. I can't even remember. I think they had a first round that was back and forth, both landing decent shots. And then in the second round, Kopilov just sets him up for this beautiful fucking head kick. If you blinked, you would have missed it. It came out of nowhere. It just snaps it on his chin, puts him out cold. Like I said, something in the air in Salt Lake City when it comes to the head kicks. Awesome, awesome knockout from Roman Kopilov. I barely picked him, too. I almost leaned the other way. And then we had... This was one of the best fights on the prelims, in my opinion. Uros Medic taking on Matt Semmelsberger. I thought Matthew Semmelsberger was going to be able to just bully him in there because they were fighting at welterweight. And Uros, I didn't realize how big of a welterweight he was going to be. He's usually a lightweight. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Matt was bullying him in the first round. Dropped him, was doing good. But then in the second, Uros Medic started to land a lot better on the feet, in my opinion. And then in the third round, he really pieced him up with some mean combos. At one point, he drops him with, like, a spinning back fist. Lands a beautiful combo with like a hook after that and a head kick. It was just all bad. And then the fight ends up getting stopped and I'm not mad at it. That's going to be all for today's breakdown for UFC 291. If you guys fuck with the content, I like to keep it short form and quick. Give me a sub. Give me a like. I'll catch y'all.